There are times in our life when we are in between. We're in an interim time, a time that is either neither here nor there. I think one of the first times when we experience that is when our teeth starting, uh, start to become loose when we're about six years old. You remember that feeling of them moving back and forth and your tongue always seeks out that tooth to make it wiggle, but secretly and inwardly you are deeply distressed because you've never lost a tooth before. Will it hurt? Will it bleed? How will you look when it's gone? It is deeply distressing to be in this in-between time. And we rejoice when the truth finally comes out and the tooth fairy visits us, leaving a prize. But you know, that sense of in-between does not go away with the loss of that first tooth. We become middle schoolers eventually, a deep time of in-betweenness. You remember, nobody wants to go back there, really. (laughs) Suddenly our bodies are changing shape, they're changing smell, we're changing the way we think. Our parents were decent one day, and the next day they just embarrass us like crazy. We're not a teenager exactly, but we are not that kid that was losing that first tooth. It is an in-between time. It's not long before we have another one of those in-between interim times. When we become seniors in high school, We have to fill out college applications or seek out a trade school. We know that this is a deeply meaningful decision. Where will we go? Will we have friends? What is this thing called student debt? (laughs) This sense of momentousness and Paul and excitement is a bundle in our hearts as we're stepping out on our own. The interim, though, for waiting for those acceptances is like death. Can I get a witness? (laughs) All right. But that's just like the beginning of interim time, right? There's the whole time of finding that job and hearing that we are looking for efficiencies. We know because we've talked to the elders in our field that one of the things that efficiency seeking may lead to is layoffs and reconfiguration and my job may not be secure. Sitting in that interim is awful and maybe worse yet, is if you are the manager that's got to be the one to tell those people that you are looking for efficiencies. It's hard to sit in the interim. It doesn't get any easier. It doesn't end there. Sometimes we get words like, this x-ray does not look right. I think you should come back for some more tests. You go for the MRI, and they say, hmm, it looks like there is a tumor there in your lung or in your brain or in your bones. You fill in the blank. And then you've got to wait. That interim time between diagnosis and course of treatment feels like a forever. And it is. We go through an interim time toward the end of our lives, too, when we're not seeing quite like we used to, and we don't exactly know what our kids or friends are saying when they talk about our house not being as clean as it once was. It seems fine to me until you realize that the house really is more than you can manage. And what's the plan? in the meantime. 
This meantime, this interim and interval is not just about our individual lives. We also experience that collectively. So there is the time when we thought that we had choices to make about our bodies and when we had children, and then we realized that no, we don't have that freedom, and we're having to live in the meantime and in the interval of lack of clarity about what we can do with ourselves and our bodies. And if we're professionals, what can we do to be treating our patients? If we are in the LGBT community, we may be feeling like, yes, I have civil rights, I can now get married, but when the rhetoric turns a certain way, we realize that we are not as secure as we thought. This meantime of social justice may be very tenuous, much more so than we feared. If we have been part of a group that has been ignored and our claiming of our history has become threatening to others, we may also be in the meantime of uh, being confident in our existence and in our safety, whether we're a person of color or a Palestinian or Jew in America today. This sense of being in the interim is deeply unsettling and unsatisfying. And it proposes and poses such a challenge for us as people of faith. How do we maintain hope and confidence in the midst of so much uncertainty? Today's lesson from Isaiah is written um, by a prophet who is talking to a people who have been displaced from their land. They are people of the diaspora in Babylon. The cream of the uh, Jewish culture and Israeli, uh, Israelite identity has been moved to Babylon uh, because if you're wanting to take over a people, you take over their leaders and you take over their capital. The Babylonians know this. And they've taken the cream of Israelite leadership and society into captivity, in exile. And this has gone on for a long time, a long time. And the Israelites are struggling with how do we maintain identity and hope and confidence that God cares and that we will be able to go home. And as is so often the case in these times of in-between and despair, our poets and our musicians come and they give us words. They give us words and vision and confidence. Comfort, comfort my people, the prophet sings. Know that this time will not last forever. This time of renewal and restoration is just around the corner and you will see it and you will walk on straight paths to recreate life because God has not abandoned you. This in-between time is also a time of creativity and openness to new things. You may not know this, but the synagogue was born out of the Babylonian captivity. Just think about what an existential crisis it was for the Israelites to have their temple raised to the ground and then being uh, the leaders and the capital moving to Babylon. It would have been easy to dissolve and to give up hope, but instead, the synagogue is born. If we can't have a temple of bricks and mortar, we will build a temple in our hearts and in our prayer and in our practice. We will not be defeated. The interim time can be a time of newness and creativity. One of my favorite poets 
is a Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic priest called John o O'Donohue. And he has a poem called For the Interim Time that I want to share with you today. When near the end of day, life has drained out of light, and it is too soon for the mind of night to have darkened things. No place looks like itself. Loss of outline makes everything look strangely in between, unsure of what has been or what might come. In this wan light, even trees seem groundless. In a while it will be night, but nothing here seems to believe the relief of darkness. You are in this time of the interim where everything seems withheld. The path you took to get here has washed out. The way forward is still concealed from you. The old is not old enough to have died away. The new is still too young to be born. You cannot lay claim to anything in this place of dusk. Your eyes are blur blurred and there is no mirror. Everyone else has lost sight of your heart and you can see nowhere to put your trust. You know you have to make your own way through as far as you can, hold your confidence. Do not allow confusion to squander this call, which is loosening your roots in false ground that you might come free from all you have outgrown. What is being transfigured here is your mind. And it is difficult and slow to become new. The more faithfully you can endure here, the more refined your heart will become for your arrival in the new dawn. Friends, in this season of interim, which is what Advent is, we're invited by the poet and by our tradition to allow ourselves to rest in the interim, to allow ourselves the freedom to recognize that the old is passing away and the new is not quite yet here and to recognize it and to be in it together. As a congregation, we are struggling with being in the interim as well. We have had um, many uh, struggles as we discern our way forward uh, with our building, with our school, grappling with embezzlement and lawsuits, figuring out who we are in this post-pandemic world and listening hard for what God is doing in our midst. We would love for it to be clear and known. But I listened to John O'Donohue. Hold your confidence. Do not allow confusion to squander this call, which is loosening your roots in false ground, that you might come free from all you have outgrown. That's true for us personally, and it's true for us together. May we abide in the meantime. Amen.